Kasparov is out of the competition. Tal, Chernyan, Georgiev, and Verganian all advance to the semifinals. The first to play the best of four games are Chernyan and Tal. Right, so this is the first game, Tal playing white against Chernin in the first of the semi-finals. Chernin still is relying upon his perks defense. Tal has played the bishop b5 check and captures on d7. Yes. This is a variation I rather like for white myself. Uh, one, of the pro early, one of the problems with black playing an early c5 has been this. Interesting move. White uh, can't take the pawn because of queen a5 check driving the knight back and then bishop takes c3 check I, I think that this is a good idea for white to take that pawn you think he should take it i think he should well he hasn't <laughs> he hasn't the idea is to provoke that bishop exchange for that knight yes and uh that bishop on g7 can be a monster in the position yes. better to exchange it i think tal's going to feed his position pieces over to the king side here i like the way tal centralizes his pieces always piece of efficient squares and if I may now draw a comparison, an odious comparison between Tal's conduct of the games in this Blitz Championship and the play of Garry Kasparov. And Kasparov was eliminated, as we know, in the quarterfinal. And so often he was you know, going for small edges and playing as if his opponent was Karpov. Yes. But of course, <laughs> it's not. Nobody else plays like Karpov. And Tal has a much different approach. He's playing aggressively. He's going for the king. He's playing in a very free and easy style. And that's yes. what Kasparov should have been doing. I concur. Um, Tal had a very interesting possibility on his last move. He could have taken once on g6, provoked hg, and I think he should do it. And then just simply pop in knight f5. Yes, I think he will. This is he probably a, will do this. This is quite vicious. Yes, he's done it. Good old Tal. Just, just the kind of thing we like to see from Tal. Absolutely. I mean, Black's king is I know just a sitting duck. We're, we're meant to be impartial, yes, sir, but I can't help fit saying that I'd like to see Tull win this game. This is a marvelous cavalier attack by Tull. They each win one game. It's tied going into the third round. In the third round, Chernyan is in trouble. I H4. still don't see how he's going to answer h4. You play g5, you're just opening up that beautiful bishop no, on he b1. He can't possibly do that. Um... On the other hand, I don't really like to live with the move G4, G5 coming. This is terrible, K by Chernin. My God, I mean, this is this is the Pacificity of the Year award. All fours in the year. Now he's going to lose his queen now, surely. That's it. Well, hasn't he lost his queen? Good God, Rook D8. What a horrible move. And where's his queen going? Yeah, it's going oh. to D4. This is this is just junk, absolute junk. He's lost his queen for a rook. And it's mate And one. it's mate, yes. It's unbelievably... Well, he can play knight have 8 I suppose, and roll around for a... No, he's supposed to stop. Resigns, resigns. What an appalling game by Chernin. Chernin loses. Tal is leading 2-1, going into game four. All he needs now is a draw. Using his king at all. No. Uh, ah, and then it's fire, firing off moves at machine gun, machine gun like speed. Bishop C2. Has a hesitation. This is going to be absolutely fatal. Let's, look, let's keep an eye on the clocks as well because thirty-six seconds. This could be decided on time. It could go either way. Oh my God! He can't take the. And he has the wrong coloured rook pawn. Precisely right. What? what? Is it? Oh. Keep, watch the watch the clocks because uh, someone's flag is going to fall in this. Ah. Uh. Well, knocking the pieces over. This is getting quite chaotic. We have 42 seconds to 9 seconds for Chernin. Uh, it looks like Chernin. Tal is going to win the match by virtue of the fact that Chernin won't physically be able to make all the moves. No, I think he still has enough time. He's taking the pawn. Now he's, now he's really winning. Yeah, but are you going White to is, win? White is w really winning this. Yes, but I mean, the point is, is that if Black can sacrifice his bishop for that pawn... Yes, he'll have bishop and knight, and it just... But then, uh... And we can see those two... The uh, flag's fallen. Chernin's flag has fallen. Chernin's flag has fallen. The game ends in a draw. The tile advances two and a half, one and a half. The final, Georgiev, who managed to knock out the world champion Garry Kasparov, is playing Rafael Vaganian, known for using the French defense in tournament play.
So who do you favour, Yasser, in this game? Um, or in this match, let's say in the match? I, I should say that since the semi-finalists were known, I have uh, favoured both Tal and Vaganyan. I'm uh, afraid we will see an all-Soviet final. I, I don't know. I, th I rather favour Georgiev in this, in this match. I think it's a, a question of uh, a fight between flair and uh, solidity, and dogged solidity. Well, in five-minute chess... Um, Hang on, what's going on? Flair... Is, is, something, is there some tactical possibility here with knight g5? No? Doesn't work? Yes, he's played it. Threatening mate on h7. He must take that off, and then bishop takes b7. Hitting the rook on a8. Rook hmm. moves. Well, that was awful uh, by Vaganyan. No, he just plays knight e4, you see? This, this is it. Knight takes g5, threatening mate. And there goes a piece. I'm afraid Solidity has uh, outdone Flair in this game. The game's over. Game two starts out as a good tactical model of play, but ends in a dispute. The way the dispute is settled makes chess history. We'll just enjoy his technical uh, mastery, which we haven't thus far enjoyed, as he's certainly not doing a very good job at all. Yes, it, it's so often the case in these games that somebody establishes a completely winning position and then the final part of the game is just sheer butchery. Is oh, oh, my no. God! I don't believe it. Vaganya left his king on freeze. And he's uh, mumbling something. He doesn't seem very happy. Vaganya is very angry with himself. And he is He's complaining that perhaps Georg Georgiev either pressed the clock or... Vaganyan seems to be claiming that since he hadn't pressed his clock, he should not yet have lost that game. And now perhaps his claim is valid. Yes, well, there has to be an arbiter's decision here about this. The move was made too quickly for the arbiter. The decision is made to replay the videotape of the game. In an ending with Vaganian two pawns ahead in a simply one rook and pawn end game, he made a move which allowed his king to be taken by Georgiev's rook. However, Vaganian did not punch the clock, which means he could have taken the move back and still made a legal move. Unfortunately, Georgiev jumped the gun and took Vaganian's king. The arbiter's decision is to allow Vaganian to take the move back. It gave him the momentum to go on and win the game.
after four games, it's tied 2-2. The match goes into sudden death. Then it's another draw and another sudden death. So far, it's been a very even contest. I thought that several times in the match that Vaganyan had the match wrapped up. But, uh, of he course, got untied it again. Ah, uh, yes. Very well played by Vaganyan, in fact. Well, this is terrible. I mean, what we're seeing is uh, Vaganyan is, is being pressed for time. He has 44 yes, seconds. Yes, this is a travesty. It should be stopped, and the Arbus should declare this a draw. Yes. This is ludicrous. Is there really no provision in the rules to stop a game like this? Uh, not to my knowledge. It's tied again. The seventh game is a draw by stalemate. Now, it's game eight. Something tells me that this feeding frenzy that uh, Vaganyan is having uh, could easily go against him. Well, what was the point of F4? Uh, in order that when he played knight h2 check to drive white's king the to the e-line. Yes, the e -file thing. wasn't available. There's some funny stuff happening here. I believe Vaganyan is completely winning the position. Again? Again. F4 uh, was a strange move. Well, the point is, is Black's queen is going to be driven from the square, from the diagonal, uh, h1, which, is, which in fact has occurred already. Well, don't speak too soon, because queen it's a queen h3 is mad. Knight takes h4 check, of course. But there's no perpetual check, in my opinion. Just take it, king back. Mm -hmm. No, he's, he's, got, he's not got anything. And, uh, Black... Yard is finally going to win. He's a rook up. Black is staring at... Yes. As well, he's all he can do is stop, stop White from mating him on F7. Precisely. Uh, long last, Vaganyan finally has a winning position. Well, Vaganyan is going to run his king to the queen side, after which he'll be comfortably ensconced, and um, the game is over. Queen captures B6. Oh. No, bishop e5 is good, but it defends f4. Yes, this is a consolidating move, yes. a very strong consolidating move. It leaves the pawn on f2 with check, but that doesn't matter. Still, um, a player like myself would have preferred immediately getting my king out of danger, king c1. He's played king c2. Which is fine. King b1. And now... That's it. White, That's white, white threatens uh, horrible things like queen b6 and things. Uh, this is over. This is and a nice king run by Vaganyan, but he is a rook up, and after all, he should be able to win the game. And with two minutes and 14 seconds for... More, more time, in fact, than your game. He, he, um, the match is over. Um, Vaganyan is winning very easily. Queen e6 is a horrid threat. Queen b6 is a horrible threat. And in fact... Queen uh, takes b6. Why doesn't he play queen takes b6? It's been on for so long. He's he played has. it. And Check. I just... Back. Queen b3. Queen back to b7. Yes, just developing our extra rook, I might add. And now queen b8 check and resignation. No, he doesn't resign, but he can. But everything is dropping off here. Bishop takes check. Knight oh, takes everything. Knight takes check. e8 check. Everything. Queens, rooks, knights. He must resign. Not even the most hardened optimist is going to carry on here. Amazingly enough. No, he's resigned. Vaganyan's gone.